interested in learning about wine, but not sure where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Cork and Fizz Guide to Wine podcast. I'm your host, Haley Bullman, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm a wine enthusiast turned wine educator and founder of the Seattle-based wine tasting business, Cork and Fizz. It is my goal to build your confidence in wine by making it approachable and lots of fun. You can expect to learn everything from how to describe your favorite wine to what to pair with dinner tonight and so much more. Whether you're a casual wine sipper or a total cork dork like myself, this podcast is for you. So grab yourself a glass and let's dive in. Today's episode is a very special episode. I thought it was about time that I told you my story, how I fell in love with the world of wine, and how I created Cork and Fizz. I figured if you've been listening for this long, you might actually want to know a little bit about me. (laughs) So I want to start with telling you a little bit about how I fell in love with wine how that connected to starting a wine club with friends, and then how the pandemic encouraged me to start this business. All right, let's dive into it. So before I was a big wino, as you one might say, wine was my drink of choice. So it's always been, um, I was never much of a, a liquor fan or beer. Despite growing up in Wisconsin, I know all of my relatives are like, what is wrong with you? But wine was always my drink of choice. And when I traveled abroad in Spain, um, I was 20 years old, so I was not legally allowed to order alcohol in the U.S. And I definitely never did before I turned 21. But when I was 20, I could order wine in Spain. And in Spain, they have this thing called Menu del Dia, which like, can we please start implementing that in the U.S.? Because it's amazing. You basically get like a first course, second course, and dessert plus a drink. And it's usually like 10 to 12 euro. It's probably gone up by now. But that's what it was when I was there. And your drink choice included wine if you wanted. So I very frequently ordered vino blanco with every meal. And fun fact, this has nothing to do with really how I fell in love with wine, (laughs) but vino blanco is also one of the reasons I ended up showing up to one of my Spanish classes completely drunk in Spain. And this is because, (laughs) it's a funny story. I, um, so again, like I said, so with every meal or, you know, in Spain, your lunch meal is your largest meal, but you eat it anywhere between like 2 and 4 p.m. So I had gone and done a workout after my classes ended at 1. And then I came back to grab a quick lunch and I stopped at this little restaurant next to my apartment that I was staying in. And I ordered menu del dia and I asked for vino blanco for my drink. Well, when they came over to pour me a glass of this wine, they also left the bottle. The whole bottle was for me. I was sitting by myself. And so, you know, I was 20 years old. And so in my mind, I'm like, this wine can't go to waste. I got to drink as much as I can of this. So I probably had like three glasses, which was enough to get me quite tipsy. Unfortunately, I had one of my late night video classes that night um, that we were taking in Spain. And so needless to say, it was an interesting class. I may have corrected my professor on his pronunciation, which like, oof, God, that makes me shudder now. But uh, it was a, it was a good story to come home with. And trust me, my friends and family tease me about it every chance they get. Anywho, vino blanco, right? That's all I ordered. Vino blanco, which is white wine. There's also a picture of me, now we're moving on from 20, and when I turned 21, there's a picture of me with a magnum bottle of barefoot Moscato, posing very happily for my 21st birthday. I was definitely into the sweeter white wines, they were the easiest to drink, and that's what I went for. After that, I moved on to Nobilo Sauvignon Blanc. If you've never had this before, highly recommend. It's a very lovely wine. Uh, you can get it for like 10 bucks at the grocery store, I think. But I enjoyed this wine because I was actually at a dinner party. We had just moved to Seattle, my husband and I. Well, we were just dating at the time. But we'd moved to Seattle, and he actually had some extended family here. So we visited them, and we had a dinner, and they served, I think, grilled steak. And at the time, I wasn't eating red meat. So I had grilled shrimp that they had. And then they served it with a white and a red. And at the time, I was still mostly only drinking white wine. And so I had the white, which was this Nobilo Sauvignon Blanc. Absolutely loved it. Thought it was lovely. And so then every chance I had after that, uh, whenever I was at the store, I would buy Nobilo Sauvignon Blanc because I knew I liked it. (laughs) But beyond that, I didn't really explore very far. You know, I was just a white wine drinker. We did, I think, 
at some point join one of the wine clubs, either like Bright Cellars or something like that, where they'd send you like six new wines every so often. But that was kind of about it. Now, let's get into how I actually fell in love with wine. But that all changed after a trip to the Willamette Valley in Oregon in August of 2018. So this trip was just meant to be a fun birthday trip. My birthday's at the end of August. Uh, my husband was taking me down. And it worked out really well because at the time, his parents were living in Portland and we were in Seattle. So we basically drove down to Portland, dropped our dog off for the weekend, and then finished driving all the way down to Willamette Valley. We'd had some wine tastings planned, had some good dinners planned, and basically with each wine tasting that we went to, I became more and more intrigued. I just, there was something that clicked where I was like, this is cool. Like, there was so much to learn about wine, and I remember at one of the wineries when we were down there, it was one of the first ones we visited, and there was only, it was a small little winery, um, and there was just another couple sitting at the bar area. That's pretty much all they had, and we were, you know, tasting the wines as they poured, and this woman next to me was describing the wine as stemmy, and this was the first time I'd ever heard that word before, and she was like, oh, this is so stemmy, don't you think? And of course, I knew nothing of what she was talking about, but like hell, I was going to let her know that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I totally get that. I had no idea at the time. But I was intrigued. I was like, what does that mean? What does it mean when a wine is stemmy? So I had to look it up. Apparently, stemmy is like the, it means like the stems of the, the, the vines, you know, the stems of the grapes were left in with the wine. So it gives it kind of that green, green pepper kind of taste sometimes. I know that now. Uh, but I didn't at the time. But I wanted to know. I'm, I'm a questioner by nature. I love asking questions. Just ask my parents. I would not shut up. I always had to ask why. So this world of wine where there was so much to learn and so much to ask questions about was so interesting. And so this Willamette Valley trip ended with basically a private tour of this winery called Archery Summit. Now, it wasn't meant to be a private tour. It was a public tour, but you actually had to call to book it. The online form wasn't working. And so I ended up calling and, you know, since no one else in this generation likes calling anymore, my husband and I were the only two that were on this tour. And so it was this older guy that worked there and he gave us the full tour. We got to go into the vineyards. He gave us a couple grapes to taste and taught us about the tannin, you know, and, and, you know, how the juice of it tastes different. Juice of the grape tastes different than the skin of the grape. And even the seed is where a lot of that tannin is stored and how that felt. Then he took us into the winery, introduced us to one of the winemakers, and then finally let us sit outside as he poured some of the wines. He was absolutely amazing, and he could tell that I was so curious and so intrigued to what he was saying. So by the end of the tour, he recommended that I check out this book called Cork Dork. Now, if you remember a couple episodes back, I uh, got to interview the author of this book, uh, Bianca Bosker, and this is so special to me because this is truly the book that got me into wine. Now, after that trip, I honestly kind of forgot about it a little bit. I, I didn't end up reading Cork Dork right away. But it wasn't until I was at Powell's. Again, we were in Portland again since my husband's parents lived there. And Powell's is this massive bookstore in Portland. And I was looking in the cooking cookbook section. I was obsessed with cookbooks at the time. I still enjoy a good cookbook. But then I happened to see on one of the spines of the books there, Cork Dork. And I was like, oh, I remember this. I that guy was mentioning I should read this. And I was like, why the hell not? So I picked it up and I read it in probably a couple days and I was instantly hooked. I mean, I had to learn more about wine. So I checked out every book that I could from the library on wine. Seattle has a lovely library system. So I checked out every book from the local library. Then I got online and I tried to get every book I could from all the other wineries. And I just kept reading and kept learning. Now, as I'm sure it's obvious here, I love learning. And I've loved learning since I was a kid. I was truly a dork as a child. And I say that in the most loving way. I, you know, especially in math, weirdly enough, um, I know the connection with math and wine isn't really there, but I would like make math problems for myself. Like that was entertaining. I would be sitting 
<laughs> writing in my notebook, making little multiplication problems for myself. And then, you know, I also love to rewrite books and I love to write my own books. My mom has quite a few fun little stories that I made um, from when I was younger. And I just, it was just so fun. I was, I was that kid that loved learning. But as I got older, learning became about achieving. It began to be, you know, like you learn to achieve to have success. And because I was always deemed the smart kid or the nerdy kid, there was this pressure that I put on myself more than anything that I had to succeed. So I only really learned as much as I needed to to have success in that class, right? I learned enough to get an A on that test. I learned everything I could so that I could, you know, so I could get a good grade on the paper. And learning was no longer fun because I put so much pressure on myself to do well. And I did this throughout high school to get into a good college. I did this throughout college to get a good job. And then when I got a job, I had to prove myself in the job. And so I would learn things just so I could succeed. And so I really kind of got away from learning. I was having a hard time finding a way to do it that was fun. That was until I found wine. I mean, how could it not be fun to learn about wine when part of the learning process is drinking wine, right? Like, how cool is that? And I've never been someone who got to travel a lot. Growing up, we spent, you know, most of our vacations were within driving distance. We would, you know, I'm from uh, southern Wisconsin, so we would go up north and stay at a cabin or we would go to Chicago. A couple times we flew to Texas because we had family down there, but I didn't travel a whole lot. Um, that studying abroad in Spain was my first time traveling outside of the U.S. So the cool thing about wine was that I got to travel and learn about these different regions through the wine and the glass. And it was just so... And then the thing is about wine, you can never learn all of it. There will always be more. And as someone who like binges TV series and like really gets into it, I hate when things end. So like the fact that this would never end was such a cool thing. So like I said, fell in love with it, really wanted to learn as much as I could. And then as I was learning from these books, I also wanted to taste the wine. And now just tasting the wine on myself, one, a little lonely, And two, it was going to cost a lot of money if I wanted to taste a lot of different wines. So I decided to start a wine club with some friends. And this also had the added benefit of being able to kind of bond and connect with people. Um, We were still somewhat new to Seattle, my husband and I. Um, We'd moved in, I think, like May of 2017. So we we did get to know some people. I got to know some people from work, from the apartment um, that we were living in. But in October of 2018, I officially started my wine club. And so we invited uh, my coworkers. We invited people from the apartment that we were living in. Uh, we even invited some friends we met at the dog park <laughs> with our with our pup. I'm trying to think. There were a couple others, and then a couple of them invited their friends. And so we ended up with this group, and it was the wine club. So we'd meet together every month, and there'd be a theme. So I think the first month was bring your favorite wine. Now, a lot of us actually didn't drink wine at the time. I was probably the only one that was super into wine. So a few of them just grabbed like a fun one from the store that had a fun label. But yeah, we would all try a bottle of wine based on the theme. I would try to go through kind of the tasting process, teaching them about it, what I had learned. Um, And then I also made these little rating sheets. And at one point, it was just like a basic sheet where you could kind of write your notes. But we learned that we actually really enjoyed emojis. So I had like this sheet where you could just like circle emojis for each wine of like what it made you think of. Super fun way to do it. But then at the end of the night, we would vote for our favorite. And then whoever brought the favorite bottle would get to pick the theme the next month. And it was a huge hit. It was a great way to connect with friends. Now, I will say our first wine night was on a Monday night. Not the smartest of ideas. That next Tuesday was really, really challenging. So we, we, we've we since moved it to Fridays and Saturdays. But it was so fun. And it was a great way to connect. And we really bonded as a group. And then for me, as somebody who was getting into wine, it was a great way to try lots of wines. Do you ever find yourself standing in front of the wine aisle at the grocery store feeling completely lost and overwhelmed? Don't worry, you're not alone. But what if I told you that I have a way to transform the wine aisle from overwhelming into an endless sea of joy and discovery? And it involves drinking wine and joining the most welcoming and fun community. In my Court Crew Virtual Tasting Club, we're all about exploring new and exciting wines in a fun and supportive community. No more feeling intimidated or stuck in a rut of buying the same bottle of wine. 
Each month, we explore two new wines, so you can broaden your palate and explore new flavors. Not only will we taste these wines together, but we'll learn about where the wines come from, essentially traveling the world all through the wine in our glass. Come join the Cork Crew, and you'll have the opportunity to taste new wines, meet winemakers and other wine professionals, and connect with like-minded wine lovers from all over the world. Imagine the joy of discovering a new favorite wine and being able to confidently choose a bottle that you know you'll love. So why not join us? Head to my website at corkandfizz.com slash the cork crew to sign up. And don't forget to use code wine101 to get your first month free. And now back to the show. And so besides that, so we'd had that going every month, you know, going on. And it's been going every month since then, if you don't count the pandemic, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, we've we've kept that wine club going. Besides that, I also wanted to learn a little bit from experts. And so I started visiting some of my local wine shops. Many of them offered a free tasting at some point during the week. So I went to University Wines, which is on Sandpoint. The guy there, Gordon, it was a little intimidating walking in at first. It is an older white guy uh, that clearly seems to know his way around wine. And I had no idea. But as soon as I walked in, started talking about how I was interested in learning He opened up, started telling me everything he could. So I went to University Wines. I would taste there. I also tasted at the McCarthy and Shearing is another local one around here. They have free tastings on Saturdays. So I'd go there to learn. But I went to a couple other shops and I just took advantage of these free tastings so that I could taste the wine before I bought it. And then I would ask questions while I was there. And it was a really great way to learn. So I was doing this, you know, started the wine club in 2018, started visiting my local wine shops. And we'd been doing this wine club for a while when the pandemic hit. And obviously the pandemic was a really challenging time for a lot of people. For me personally, I was lucky enough that my job could be done at home, but I was really missing that personal connection with people and and just doing things. I I get bored very easy if it's not obvious from the fact that I (laughs) created a business and just keep going, going, going. I need something to do. And I was bound, determined to keep this wine club going. We decided it wasn't safe to meet in person anymore with our larger group, but I wanted to figure out what I could do to keep it going. And this is when I got my idea to host my very first virtual tasting. So what I did is I went out and I bought six wines. Um, They were all Chilean wines. I was going to do a Chilean wine virtual tasting. Went out, got these wines. I poured them into little plastic cups. I poured, you know, six tastes into six cups um, and then put them in these little carriers and then had my husband drive me around to everybody's house and then drop them off at their front door. And then we all gathered together that evening and I put on my first virtual tasting. I basically had a little slide deck. I did some research on Chile and then on each of these wines. And then we just basically did what we'd done in the past where we tried each of the wines. And I absolutely loved it. And while my friends really enjoyed it too, I was ready to do this like every week. And they're like, Haley, you're crazy. We are not doing this every week. Not everybody needs this. So it was, I think it happened on like a Friday or a Saturday or something. And then I was driving back from a a doctor's appointment of sorts. And it like hit me. I was like, I could create a business out of this. What if I offered virtual tastings to other people? I realized that, you know, I was probably not the other one who was really needing that connection with other people. And so this virtual tasting was a way to bring people together in a time when it was really challenging to do that. And it wasn't just your typical happy hour, right? We weren't just, you know, so many of us were burnt out from being on Zoom and being on video calls all day that we didn't want to get on a video call to talk with family or friends. It would be too, you know, too just boring, honestly. And so I figured this could be a way to try something new, do something a little different, enjoy some good wine, and then be able to, you know, connect with your family and friends that were far away. Plus, I had learned from, you know, starting that wine club that I really loved teaching people about wine. I honestly, growing up, part of me thought I would end up being a teacher. Um, Turns out that job is really, really hard. Like, shout out to all the teachers out there. So I didn't end up going into it, but I still love teaching. And so this way, I could teach people about wine. So decided to start this business. 
Uh, my husband was totally in favor of it and, and really uh, helped me get going. And we actually created the website in a weekend. And we did this when we were, we took like a little mini vacation to a cabin in the middle of the woods in like central Washington, but it ended up raining all weekend. To be fair, it was October in Seattle. So like, I don't know, or October in Washington. So like, I don't know what we were expecting, but it rained all weekend. So we created the the website that weekend. <laughs> um, and then we also created the name. It was, it was fun. And we just kind of went through a bunch of different like wine terms and had to look things up and see if the, the website was taken or not. But ended up deciding on Cork and Fizz. So Cork and Fizz was created in October of 2020. And then I, you know, I'd already gotten my wine education mainly kind of self-taught through all of the books that I read and through going to these tastings and events. But I wanted to make sure that people knew that I like knew what I said I knew. So I ended up getting my WSET certification, which is one of the wine certifications you can get. And I got WSET level two soon after that. So that was the start of Cork and Fizz. And like I said, it started with virtual events. But of course, once it was safe, I introduced the in-person events. And this was really fun for me because there's something about just getting people together around a table and, and having wine that just really feels special. So I introduced these in-person events once it was safe. Then I started my virtual tasting club in October of 2021. And one of the main reasons for starting this club, and it's called the Cork Crew, is that I felt like there were only two options for learning about wine. When I looked back, you know, it was either you could read a bunch of books and take some somewhat boring, I'm sorry, W said, but it was somewhat boring. Um, and it was also time consuming, these courses. Or you could attend a bunch of events, but you might feel out of place at these events. And, and I'll admit, I definitely did. When I went to these tasting rooms or when I went to the wine shops, even though the people working there were very friendly, there were definitely a lot of people there, like customers of theirs, that just knew a lot about wine. And, you know, I think my confidence came from just like, I didn't care that I didn't know as much as they did. But I know that's not easy to do for everybody. And so, you know, going to these events might be a little outside of your comfort zone. So I wanted to create a way that people could learn about wine and it was fun and you felt like you were part of the community. You felt like you belonged. And because another thing too, this was October 2021, we were still in the pandemic, um, and I think a lot of people were craving community. You know, they were craving connection and, and craving a place where they felt like they belonged. And so that is why I started that virtual tasting club, The Court Crew. We get together still every month. We taste new wines. I teach you about them, and then we taste them. And then I also introduced community events a couple, well, like six months later, I think. And this was where I bring in people from the wine world. And, and this is my like goal of trying to kind of bridge that gap between when you're new to wine and you're just starting out uh, to when you're actually starting to make connections and learn more from people in the wine world and learning that more advanced knowledge. Now, the core crew is for everybody and it always has been. Um, one of my biggest things growing up is that I didn't really fit in with a lot of my peers. You know, I only have like one friend really from high school that I talk to anymore. And I really just struggled to connect. And so it's my goal in creating the core crew to create a place where everybody feels like they belong. So whether you're new to the world of wine or you're studying for a certification, I have both <laughs> versions of those people in my crew right now. And so everybody is going to fit in there. Beyond the virtual tasting club. So now at the court crew, we do virtual wine tastings. I do in person events. I partner with local wine shops. That was super fun getting to do that. And then just this year, I finally embarked on the biggest adventure yet, but something I was so looking forward to doing, which was hosting my very first retreat. This was like the cherry on top of the Sunday, just getting to meet with so many people from around the world that I'd been connecting with through virtual tastings and totally new people as well that found me on Instagram. And so we ho I hosted my first ever retreat in Walla Walla, Washington, put together a wine tour, which apparently is something I'm also fairly good at. I think it's that type A personality where I really just like having a good schedule. I don't overwhelm it. I've learned that lesson, but I know how to find like very unique experiences um, and have like a good variety of them. I know what I like for a good retreat or, or a good wine trip. So I made sure to put all of that into this retreat. And I'm actually going to do a podcast episode on all of my tips for wine travel in the future. So stay tuned on that. But 
anyway, hosted that first retreat um, in the April of this year, so in 2023, and it was amazing. Definitely going to be bringing that back. So if you're interested in going on a trip with me to learn all about wine, let me know. But yeah, that's me. That's all about Cork and Fizz and how I fell in love with wine. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cork and Fizz Guide to Wine podcast. I know it was a little short, but I hope you loved it as much as I did. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could take a quick second to rate and leave a review. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. We release new episodes every Wednesday. In next week's episode, I'll be starting a new series where I deep dive into a particular country or wine region and teach you all about the wines there and what to expect. We'll be starting things off with the very same region that I did my first ever virtual tasting on, and that is Chile. Thanks again for listening, and if you want to learn more about wine, come follow me at Cork and Fizz on Instagram. And to try more wines outside of your comfort zone, be sure to sign up for my virtual tasting club, The Cork Crew. Use code WINE101 to get your first month absolutely free. Cheers!